Hi there, I'm Dr. Bill White again here with the American Orthodontic Society and I'm going to talk to you a little bit this morning about palatal separation, really. Uh, uh, this is the expansion of the palate and having the sutures separate and you can expand it incredible amounts. It's, it's, un, it's hard to believe what you can do uh, with the dental arches. Uh, this uh, young lady that I'm going to uh, show this morning is uh, had a cleft separation in the palate and it was worked on I think when she was an infant. Uh, I, that's all the history I got on this young lady. But the dental arches were really messed up and she was missing a six year more so we had to hold up for a while uh, till we got the second more in before we could do the palatal separation but it's uh, it's remarkable what you can do uh, with these difficult cases with using a palatal separator you know and uh, let me get into the case now and show you. Uh, this is the young lady. I'm not sure this is the first uh, picture of her. She looks a little sleepy right there, but uh, she was a very good patient. But this is the dental arches that I uh, saw <coughs> when she came in. And this upper arch was, was terrible. I mean... I didn't know what on earth I could uh, really do, but I knew that I had to expand this arch, both upper and lower. Now we expanded the upper, and uh, the tongue got her functioning correctly. It looks like uh, she was uh, kind of a mouth breather a little bit to start with. The lower arch is wider there than the upper arch and the upper arch is very narrow that it you can't tell it but in a, a little bit here i'm going to show you i put my little finger in here and it nearly touched the teeth there and came back on this side and didn't touch that's my little finger on my left hand and the fingernails right about uh, about there and then you'll have to look look at the next picture will be after we separated the palate and I actually used two palatal separators to get it out that wide uh, this is just to show you the bottom arch now was fairly uh, normal in shape uh, this was a space maintainer she had in there when she came in and there is a bicuspid down underneath here and so you'll see that uh, as we go along and this was in 1975 when i uh, took these models uh, february of 75 and we didn't have brackets uh, uh, to start with we just banded this case and uh that made it a little harder to close the space and everything. But uh, we managed to pull that space together with a long, not a, kind of a thin elastic, and it would close the space. You had people just chew everything, uh, bubble gum or whatever they wanted. And this is the uh, set that we took. And I don't see the date on the set, but it's the same time, I'll probably do that first uh, Panamax here that we'll show, and uh, you can see that uh, uh, space maintainer, and we're starting the work, so it doesn't matter that this isn't there, and we're going to hold that uh, tooth in place, and we'll get that, but we had no six-year molar. And I had to hold up until the second floor developed and came down and had some loot on it, you see, up here before we could get started uh, really uh, good on this case. Uh, now, this is an old-timey uh, 
pen marks and he had to jump that one time we would cut them you know right like here and take this part out and and tape it together you can see both sides of the picture uh, good enough for that now the second mower is drifted forward in here you'll notice on this uh, part and uh, we're getting closer to the time we'll start the case uh, we're watching it to get that uh, upper right second mower i think that's the right one we look in so here it is in 5 of 75 uh, we're really started now we got this second mower in the bicuspids and we banded them and put in a palatal separator and uh, you could cut this in, in uh, at this point and anything that's inside the circle will show up twice you see in there but they make uh, excellent things to tell you exactly where the molars meet uh, in the case so I, I really uh, like that old Panerex better than the, the modern ones we can have them bite together and take the picture in the, the, the corner the position of the molars against each other uh, and how deep the bite walls and all these things uh, so the separator is in there and we went as far as one would go and then cranked it out with another one and I was afraid that the thing would uh, kind of collapse back so I put a lingual bar in there to kind of uh, keep it spread out and I really uh, didn't have to use that uh, deal but uh, we did and it it worked all right and kept it out and uh, here is the second mower and there's a wisdom tooth coming in here on this side now this one will probably have to be extracted i would think this room to get a, a wisdom tooth back here uh, the jaws turned up like this so we just wait and see we don't cover that that part uh, now here after we got through i found out that there was a place in the palate that was not closed by bone structure uh, this was a deep fact but the, they had had this uh, palate sewn together um, apparently when this young lady was just an infant and it uh, really defected it had an effect on the development of the arts and uh, whether she was missing this six year molar or they removed it or something I don't know what the score was but she had no six year molar in that uh, I think it's the upper right area so but she did have a wisdom too so we brought it forward and uh, during the separation the, the bite opened because we pushed the uh, cusp up on top of the other cusp and the bite opened and this band came off of the tooth and I took that picture before we uh, re-cemented the band on that particular uh, on the, it looks like the left central right there and this is 12 of 74 right there uh, where we are <clears throat> now here is the palette uh, when we started and uh, after we separated and I went back and I did two of them and you can see the suture must have been worked on this scar tissue inside here and I didn't realize it at first this was a spot if i put my finger on it i could have felt it just gave there's nothing but tissue over this part but it sealed off and this was a defect but it had bone underneath it and then the thing separated and we carried it that far apart this little place right here was about the size of a uh, pencil eraser and 
it didn't change. And I was unaware that it was there. And in the separation, it did not get any bigger. It stayed the same. And so we spread it out that much, and the suture came apart, and here in the bone fell back in the palate, back up there, and was quite stable after we finished the separation. Now, we banned all of these teeth on our separators. We make our, made our own separators. I separated this one. You see, it was coming apart right in here. So we had to change it and put another one in there and then cracked it a little bit further with that. Um, and it, the, this is, let me get over here to one of these pictures and show you those <laughs> where I had my little finger in the palate. And here we are. Well, this was, uh, in 75, the dates seem to be messed up here, the lower arch, and this is 1974, so the other one obviously uh, is not, the date is not right on it. Uh, this is 74, 12 of 74, and we've got all the lower arch banded up and in, uh, in, in it's shaped out pretty good, and we just widened it with the regular arch wires. Of course, it was wider than the upper to start with. We didn't put any separation in there. Now, the when you put upper separators in, it forces the tongue down in the lower arch, and so the tongue widens the lower arch usually. Now, this lower arch was already wide because of probably function and and I think mouth breathing, but she didn't have any increase in vertical dimension of the face. Uh, okay, here we are in 2 of 75, and we've uh, got this lined up pretty good. We brought these teeth back together. There was a big gap in between here. We brought them back together, and we got the teeth over, and the upper teeth over, so that the cusps weren't meeting on top of each other and the bite closes down as we go and we get the young lady breathing correctly she can certainly breathe a lot better there's an increase in the airway when you do this just a lot of benefits happen from a palatal separator it's one of my favorite uh, tools to use in orthodontics and we've done an awful lot with them I'm going to show several cases where we've separated the palate like this. Now, we'll go ahead and, uh, and this is a, well, this is the one that had completely come apart in here. You see. So we put another one and used it. We didn't go too much further with it. I don't think we've got a picture of it. And the Lord can spread out this. 9 of 75. Apparently we did come in and put another one and we widened it out even further. And then we'll bring it together up here. This is 9 of 75. And that still is open. Now this one, we cranked it out as far as it would go. And it's uh, wider. So you can just do a tremendous amount of, of expansion of the arches. And if you just kind of go along easy with it, the bone structure goes with the teeth. You don't have to, and you'll have a gap in here. And you can x-ray it from the nose down. I've got some on that guy that didn't separate the sutures, never separated from him. But here... We're almost certain I didn't shoot any of those pictures, but it separated out and did good. And uh, the bottom arch goes, it kind of expands with it, and the cusp will, you know, your upper cusp come down in here, something like that. And uh, 
that kind of helps bring the Lord uh, to separate. And we separated the, or we expanded the uh, arch wires in there. I didn't, uh, to my knowledge, didn't use the big daddy arch to separate that uh, at that time or to keep the Lord going. So here we are. In 1976, now we pull this together, and we've worn this thing for some time. We're going to come in and do uh, pull the thing together, and there we put that place in in two of 76. This is just a thing to ensure that the thing stays out. I don't think I really had to have that. Deal. I could have probably done it with the arch wires. It's one that's hard to keep apart. But you can see where this was sewn together as an infant. And this is the place where there is no bone. It's just tissue. But it's a thick tissue in there on both sides. Okay. Now here I went, wanted to show you how much this is separated. Now this is my little finger on my left hand and I stuck it on this model and I had a camera in my other hand and I just shot a picture of it. And uh, that's how narrow that was. Those two teeth that touch in there. And this is a, a person's palate and you couldn't do this surgically. You couldn't do this. But you can do it with a palatal separator. You gradually go out and the bone goes out with you. If you did it surgically, you got to split it and move this out, move that out. And it's very difficult. And to get it to grow back like that, it just would be very, very difficult to do. Now, look at this next picture. That's my same little finger in there, and I've got the gap over here like that. And that's how much this palette has separated. It's, it's, uh, it's hard to believe what you can do with this. And so we took that palette and it's messed up like that. Now, I'm going to back up and look at that. And see where that was to start with. Now, isn't it incredible that you can come along with some arch, some orthodontic appliances? I use bands. You could do it even better with brackets and do this whole thing and change this person's life. There's no way about it. I don't believe you could have done this job this good. If you were a skilled orthodontic surgeon, or, or and you had to have been dealing with a bone here that had not grown out to go with this. Now, this is uh, remarkable. Excuse me. This is remarkable, and you can do this. Uh, you you now don't jump on a case like this until you really uh, have done enough orthodontics where you kind of know what you're doing in here. But now look at that, the difference in this arch and the, the arch that I just have shown you. I don't think you could do this surgically as good. Uh, it would be quick. Now, this took a little time for me to do it, but look at what is accomplished here. If this were your mouth, it would be much, you would do it this way, I know, rather than going in and having a orthodontic surgery uh, spread out your palate. Uh, you can, uh, it is to me incredible what you can do to these pallets like that. Now that's out that way. Now let's go through right quick and I'll show you. We finished it out. We got the uh, bands and everything 
and we work too. You see, we brought this cuspid out. You see this little eminence in the arch wire. The cuspid thicker than the lateral, but we wanted the incisal edges of these to line up all down here. Now this is the lower arch, so the upper fits over this, you see. And the cusp, the lingual cusp of the upper goes down in this the groove right there sometimes, which is broader than that. Uh, now, we'll look at the upper part now. We've got some space up here, so we're going to bring this and close this together and uh, do some finishing stuff. And we need to rotate this cusp a little better. We'll look at what it looks like when we get through. This cusp right here seems to be rotated. And I'll bring that in. I think we uh, did that. And, uh, and here's this palette. It's got this suture that was done apparently when the child was young. And here is that defect in it. And uh, that never bothered us at all. You wouldn't see it until you touched it. And uh, you, you wouldn't think it was there, but you touched it and this will go in. And so when I took an impression, this always had a little sunken in area in the impression. If you were, if I'd have really been on the ball, I would want to why. Why did that sink in during that impression? But I didn't really get that until further on in the case, and we separated it. I did not know that that defect was there. If I had, I might have been afraid to separate it this much. But I separated it, and the, 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 this little defect was the same size when I started as it was when I finished. It never did fill up, of course. <laughs> uh, so, now, I'm correcting the midline a little bit, and I think we wore over class two elastic on the uh, left side over here. We bonded this little uh, solder with the brass wires onto your the end with the hook on it, that's the way we did back uh, in the 70s. And here we put a, a wire hook, kind of a Kadiyashi hook on that, uh, doing the midline in the class two, uh, get that out, and uh, we're finishing the case up. Okay, there's getting pretty close. We've got the space over here. Still need some rotations uh, of the T. All right, here it is in three of 77. And we started this somewhere in 74, nearly 75, I guess, getting close. Now, when we did bands, we had to close the space with a rubber band. And we put that on, and you just said, Oh, God, I hope this uh, still has enough torque when you get through. Banding cases with uh, coming out of them was a real problem. And that's where uh, these Invisalign stuff got its start, uh, doing that. And you could do some stuff like that, but close spaces. But as far as doing some complicated orthodontic, you will never get it done with Invisalign. It is impossible. They don't tell you about that. Uh, so, uh, anyway, I won't mean to kick Invisalign. It was good, and they can do some minor stuff real nice. And that's, uh, that's fine. I hope the people that are doing the Invisalign know some other orthodontics. So if they get into a jam, they can go back the ones I've done, I had to go back and finish them with some bracketed stuff so I could get some detail uh, done correctly. So I'm not pushing that, but uh, it's okay. Now, let's see if we can get those spaces together good and uh, look at it a little bit 
Now, when I took this impression, you see it, it pushed down in there, uh, that defect. Now, to close those spaces up, and we're waiting on the wisdom to back over on this side. Now, that's a mirror stuck in there, so these are uh, the axes that see here that we're taking a picture of right up there. And uh, this is the little arch. It's lined up real good. And everything looks pretty, pretty good. All right, here it is, 6 of 77. And the spaces look to me like they're pretty well closed. We'll put a retainer and let her close. And these will come together better down the line and close that up. But to think... You started out with what what I've shown you over there. That was incredible that you could take orthodontic appliances and come out with something like that. And that young lady will have a totally different life. It would be hard for her to accomplish what she is capable of doing with a set of teeth like that. And she would, I mean, she couldn't even have any dentures made later on uh, with a palate like that, see. And you can do this with the appliances and the stuff that we have to work with today. Now, from that side, 6 or 77, uh, and we look down on this, it's looking pretty good. Everything's lined up that cut this in pretty good. I'm not perfect right here. Not coming over here, but this one coming up back. Okay. Now the lower is lined up good. You couldn't want to get it a, a much better than that. And that's six or seventy seven. And there's the upper looking straight at it. And it's lined up and closed, the spaces are closed together. And we did this without any surgery at all. We did it with a palette of separator and arch wires that expanded it. And here it is in 1978. And these teeth are coming down and occluded. They'll get better. And it is now, in about another two or three years, the teeth grind in that we put retainers in there without anything before. They're in the rattling retainers that let the, we usually don't even use the lower one, we, but we bomb the little three to three of them inside now. Okay, there it is in 78, and it'll come down closer to that. And there's where it started out. Let me see. And there's where it is in 77. That's, you know, I have another picture back here. That's 78. And here it was when we started. And that's why I had my little thing up in this part right there. And my little finger would go in there many times. Yeah. Um, I think I messed up the parts uh, wire, so we really all finished in the case. Uh, can't get this to change out. So I'm going to close it down. And thank you for looking at it. Uh, but there's no real limit what you can actually do with these cases like that, with just the appliances that we have today. So I thank you for watching, and I'm going to stop this right here. So hope that you look at this and get something from it. Thank you. Bye-bye.